Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. I'm Danny Wisentowski. As part of the indie rock band Foxing, Connor Murphy's soaring vocals have made him a hometown favorite. The song's heavy subject matter, emotional hooks, and layers of sound feel towering and multi-layered. But his solo project, Smidley, is its own kind of musical behemoth. His new album, Here Comes the Devil, released November 11th, is the first Snidley album since its self-titled debut in 2017, and it offers its own vision of genre-defying indie rock. The result is an album whose songs explode at you, even in the soft parts. They are towering and crashing, unsettling and enthralling. And to talk about that sound and the new album, we welcome Connor Murphy. Connor, welcome to the show. And congratulations on the new album release. Thank you so much. That was such a nice description. Wow. This album is your second under the solo pro- project, Smidley, and it's really heavy, and it feels like a journey. I understand the inspiration or part of it was actually Dante's Inferno. How, d- how did you come to that? Yeah, I. Uh, so when we finished Draw Down the Moon, which is our last foxing record, um, which we talked about here, actually, uh, when we finished that, I was really, I really wanted to just start writing another album and uh and we definitely foxing wasn't ready to start making something new so uh i started just writing you know the just a few songs that ended up becoming um parts of this record and while that was happening i was also you know just uh listening to the audiobook for dante's inferno and it's so over my head i feel like every time i've talked about it i'm like yeah that was the inspiration for it but it's also like it's really complex and hard to understand yeah well they make it in english too I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah that course. was the hardest part is yeah. i was trying to read it in italian i don't yes, speak a lick of it uh well, look, let's <laughs> let's listen to to a track off off this new album. Sure. Um this is Heaven Knows I'm in Hell. Oh, and I'm sure we'll get to that in just Heaven a second. Knows. Yeah. That is he- Heaven Knows I'm in Hell, a song off the new album from Connor Murphy. The album was released just last week, and it's the second album of his solo project, Smidley. Connor, this song is so sweet and so soft, and yet I know later on in the tracks, this album just crashes you. And I've never, f- I felt both so sweet and so cuddled almost by some of these songs <laughs> and then I would just get hit across the face with you know falling down a mountain why why don't you just let me be calm and chill with I, your music I'm sorry I just that's <laughs> all I ever want is to make something that's calm and chill and, and cuddle you but it's just I, I don't know it's uh <laughs> no I mean that one specifically that's one of the most like kind of overt um uh Dante's Inferno right um reference ones so just uh, you know a lot of uh, imagery about you know walking with Virgil mm-hmm. through hell kind of stuff, and I really I was trying to repurpose all of um, that deep you know hellish poetry, uh, try to convert it into something that was really sweet because at its core it's not a sad record really it's mostly um, joyful and it's about you know a lot of it's about uh, I got engaged last year um, to my best friend Blake. And, uh, you know, we're we're getting married next year. We're really excited about that. So a lot of these songs are really like that one in particular. I'm using like kind of the imagery of 
Dante's Inferno and hell and walking through, you know, the the nine layers of hell, but also yeah. thinking about, you know, what that would feel like in kind of a happy way. Um, yeah. To, you know, that mixture of, of, of sorrow and joy. And, and first of all, congratulations on your, on your upcoming wedding. Thank you. Um, you know, the Inferno doesn't have a lot of, of a love story in it. Um, did, did these two ideas, did they feel like they went together well, though, on this album? They did for me. Um, and I think it's really because it's like I, I don't feel like something that is just like blatantly cheery ever really hits me as a, a fan of music. I never really feel like when something is just like overtly uh, joyful that I, I actually relate to it very much. It's to me, it's more like, you know, there's there's another song, um, Canto of Queens, that's specifically about uh, the fifth canto in Dante's Inferno, where it's um, it, it's about the the carnal sins, you know, uh, the uh, adultery. Yeah, and it's, let's let's take sure, a listen sure. to that. This is, as you said, Canto of Queens. That's Canto of Queens, a song off the new album, Here Comes the Devil, from Smidley, whose Connor Murphy is here with us right now. Mm-hmm. Connor, your first album for Smidley was 2017, and now we're here about five years later. What's what's changed for you? Um, I think a lot. I, 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 um, I feel a lot more comfortable um, in writing songs than I was in 2017. I feel like that first album was my first attempt at writing something totally alone. And uh, and I, I still am very proud of that record, and I love it a lot. But in this one, I feel like I was able to shake off any of the insecurities I had about writing. Um, you know, on that record specifically, I actually I brought in so many musicians to play all of the parts. Um, incredible musicians, like just really talented people and a producer. I went to Philadelphia to do it all. And on this record, uh, I've, I played nearly every instrument. I had a couple people play yeah. solos on it, but for the most part, it's like I just I played every instrument on it. And I don't think I would have done that, you know, in 2017. This is the first time where I was like, you know what? I actually I might not be the best guitar player, but I actually like my guitar playing. Mm-hmm. Um, was there was there an instrument or part that was the most fun for you to get to, to build? I there was a few songs that have um, slapping, I think, or, or a, a sound that sounds like slapping, <laughs> which I thought was a really fun uh, kind of percussion. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's like um, I was slapping my thighs mm-hmm. uh, to, for uh, percussive effect. There's a lot of that in the record where it's just um, you know I'm not a drummer, but I can. Uh, write rhythmic parts. So mm. I'll be clapping or tapping my pen on a desk and recording it or something like that. Um, and then just, you know, kind of deconstructing a drum set and playing each of the parts. Because I can do that. I can't necessarily, like, oh. play drums very well. One hand at a time? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so doing that was really fun. I Also, the guitar playing, I think, was my favorite part of the whole thing. Because, again, I'm not I'm, – I'm really – not a guitarist uh, by nature, but to kind of just figure out things um, was really, really fun for me. And so this this album that you you, you produced yourself, um, who, who did you have someone who who you did bounce ideas off of? Yeah, there was there was quite a few people. So Blake, number one, um, my Your fiance, 
uh, I I showed her just everything that I would work on. So I'd finish a song and show it to her, and she gave me just awesome feedback, even if it was just like, I really like this one or uh, I'm scared of this one, something like that. It would really help me out a lot. Also, um, Eric Hudson, who plays guitar in Foxing, he also mixed this album. He was a huge source of, of help on the whole thing. Um, and then Ian Jones, who is a electronic producer, goes by Shinra Knives um, in St. Louis. Uh, he's actually opening a, the show in um, at Del Mar Hall that Foxing's playing later this year. Uh, he, I just showed him everything as I was making it, and uh, he was extremely helpful. He's always been uh, just a really great source of criticism and encouragement. Um, he also uh, worked on one of the songs, on mm-hmm. the album, the second song, and and with with so many of the songs um, about Blake, your fiance, and and her being <laughs> kind of your editor a bit, did, did you know? Did she end up saying you got You got to make me sound better in this one. Or like <laughs> I don't, I don't like that adjective. Is it you know? Did did it or did it bring you closer? Perhaps I think it brought us closer. I also don't think that she was necessarily like reading or editing the lyrics for them as much as listening to the music itself. Um, and I think that she I think she hasn't trusted me that I'm not going to write anything mean about her. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, and, and making your lyrics very ethereal. You know, sure. you, you got to listen to it a couple times. Maybe she does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the, they're definitely uh, shrouded with a lot of imagery and metaphors. So <laughs> That is. And, you know, is there is there a favorite lyric that you have from, from these songs or, or a favorite, you know, message or, or Dante's Inferno Easter egg that you slipped in there? I think that song Canto of Queens has my favorite little Easter eggs because it's, uh, again, it's like I I didn't fully comprehend Inferno. I was listening to the audiobooks and uh, it it was, it's so complex and over my head. But there's specifically the part that really stuck out to me was the fifth canto in um, Inferno. Uh, It's known as the Canto of Queens and it's about um, Francesca di Rimini. and it's Dante and Virgil encountering these two ad- adulterers um, who their, you know, uh, uh, eternal punishment is that they're spinning in a circle uh, where they can never really, like, touch um, because, you know, uh, they killed uh, mm-hmm. her husband to be together. So and it, yeah, it's so interesting because, you know, the Inferno is, you know, they're – they're walking through these various circles. They're kind of cattily talking about the people they're passing. Dante is just putting all of his own personal beef into his characters. Yeah, he's projecting the entire yeah. time, yeah. Are you projecting uh, parts of your life into this album? Completely, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and also into Inferno. It's like I, I don't – especially not – you know, I'm not. I wasn't trying to in any way write um, a concept record that is just like translating Inferno into an album. It was way more uh, looking at each of these things because that one particularly is supposed. To, it, it seems to be a message about um, adultery being bad. But what I read in there is this this beautiful thing of like, you know, these two lovers that found each other uh, that are being punished eternally. You know, for finding true love within each other, and this kind of beautiful tragic thing of like spinning in a circle and never being able to actually be together um, for eternity. It's really sad and it's also beautiful. It's like that love is so uh, so deep that it's just, um, it has to be punished, you know? I think that's really beautiful. And, yeah, and, it, I, and think, I don't think that's the message that Dante was trying to get across. You know, maybe. You know, he, <laughs> I think he was, he was, it sounded like he was pointing some fun at the idea of hell, but also, you know, something for the people who were diehard really like the idea of people being punished for what they did. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, your, your music, you know, on this album, it does have, it is so personal and it, it doesn't feel like commentary or, or that you're, you know, satirizing a, a, a notion of hell. These are, these are really emotions that you're taking us on a ride for. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to at least. It's, uh, you know, and, and also not all of the songs are, you know, this specific one to one with Canto or uh, Inferno. A lot of them are truly just like, this is really what I'm feeling at the moment, and I would like to write a song about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, Connor, I wanted to ask you know, about some of your the wider scope of your creativity. Um, you're reading on, on some of the things you've done with Foxing, but also exploring uh, making your own Dungeons and Dragons style <laughs> RPG, um, releasing a song in multiple languages as kind of this experiment, um, and broadening things out in ways that don't always you know feel like they're in in the same musical spheres. Um, where where's that energy taking you? I think that I, I think the reason that we've always done these things or that I am drawn to doing things like that is um, because I feel like 
you know, my my interests lie uh, beyond like just making songs or albums. I, I like so many different things, and I want to incorporate myself into all of them. Um, and so, you know, to music is has given me the opportunity to do that, to make a RPG, you know, to to learn. <laughs> I mean, specifically how to sing one song in a bunch of different languages. But that that was a really cool thing where we talked to all these translators or people that, you know, bilingual people that helped me translate those songs. It's a really, really cool thing. And uh, and I appreciate that so much. And that's really what I just want to do throughout my career um, in the future is just continue to do things that are uh, beyond just, you know, writing songs and releasing them and playing them later. Connor Murphy is the vocalist of the indie rock band Foxing, and his solo project, Smidley, has a new album, Here Comes the Devil, which was released on November 11th. Connor, thank you so much for being here and sharing with us some of your musical brimstone. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Today's episode was produced by Emily Woodbury with audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our production intern is Avery Rogers. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Our podcast proudly supports St. Louis artists by using music from Life Creative Group. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thank you. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.